How does personality and empathy work together? I use this information to one, accept other people's behaviors, two, stop judging people, and three, accept myself. Every morning when I wake up, I tell myself that I know nothing, and I'm most likely wrong in my assumptions. By doing that, I have a different angle of understanding the world around me every single day. Everything you do when you are awake is interpreting the world. For each day, it gets more and more detailed depending on how much you expose yourself to it. That is why neuroticism and emotionality decreases with age. When you reach around 80 years of age, you start losing connections to your memories, which creates anxiety. That is when older people start getting more neurotic or emotional again. To give you an easy way to understand neuroticism or emotionality, go to the kitchen. If you have a family member or a friend with you, Stand five to six feet in front of the refrigerator. That's one and a half meters to two meters in front of the refrigerator. Ask the other person to open it. There should be nothing in the way between you and the refrigerator when you do this first step. Look at something you like and imagine you want that now, but stand still. Feel how that feels wanting the food in the refrigerator. Now ask the person to stand between you and the refrigerator, blocking the path. How does that feel? That what you are sensing is neuroticism. If you are alone, take one hand and move that chair between you and the target yourself. Now pause the video, go try it out. Do you feel the difference? When the person or chair is in the way of you and the target, it blocks you from succeeding. That is neuroticism you are experiencing. We all are neurotic or emotional at different levels. Your personality test will give you your level of neuroticism. This is also an important number because you can use it to calculate your level of confidence by subtracting your neuroticism value from your extroversion value. So how does empathy work together with emotions? As you recall, empathy is two parts, cognitive empathy and affective empathy. Some also argue that the ability to control the onset of affective empathy is the third part. So if you remember from the uh, emotion video, some people never get angry due to genetics. Some explode in intermittent explosive disorder, IED, and some people have a longer period of hours between the trigger and the refractory period. In countries like Scandinavia, Canada, the Netherlands and Australia, equality is high. A good thing to pay attention to is that in countries with high equality, most women moved towards the higher end of neuroticism or emotionality, but most men moved to the lower end of neuroticism and emotionality. This means that most women in egalitarian countries are becoming more reactive and men less reactive. Let's start with a crying child as a mental model. Then we are going to combine different personalities and empathy levels to try and understand how this turns out. If you are high in eroticism or emotionality and high in empathy, you will most likely start crying yourself. You will be engulfed in the emotion of sadness and agony together with a child. So now you know what to expect from yourself if you have that combination. You also know what to expect from others that you know have that combination. Using the data from the personality and egalitarian research, the probability of this being a woman is higher than that of a man. In non-egalitarian countries, it is the reversed and men and women are more equal in their personalities than in Scandinavia. Yes, men and women are more alike in China and Malaysia in personality than men and women in egalitarian countries. They are also more normal in those terms. Mainland China also have a higher mean IQ level of 104, Hong Kong 106, than egalitarian countries like Sweden that have a mean of 98, United States have a mean of 97. 
If you are high in empathy and low in neuroticism and emotionality, you will then identify the child's sadness and agony but you will not react as easy to it. You will most likely have the ability to decide if it is appropriate to start crying together with the child or not. You will not be subdued by the overwhelming emotion. Already you can see the advantage of being low in neuroticism. Using the data from the personality and egalitarian research, men would have a higher probability having this combination than women in egalitarian countries. If you're low in empathy and high in negative emotions in combinations with no cognitive empathy, you will not understand the emotion of the crying child, and thus not react to it, most likely not crying. You will most likely be perceived as callous, cold, and not emotionally intelligent. If you are low in affective empathy, you will identify the emotion and your neuroticism trait will make you react to it, most likely cry. If you're low in both cognitive empathy and affective empathy, you will most likely not react and not cry. You might be perceived as callous. If you're low in both empathy and negative emotions, you will most likely be stable. You will not cry and the child will most likely find you to be callous. Why? Because the child sees your reaction in that you fail to recognize its sad, agonizing emotion. Now, let us use an adult person laughing as a mental model. Then we are going to combine different personalities and empathy level. If you're high in empathy and high in extroversion, your ability to produce dopamine is therefore higher than introverts. If you are high in empathy, you will quickly identify the adult laughing and responding to it with a smile or laughing. More likely to be a woman than a man in egalitarian countries. Because women move higher in extroversion, men move towards introversion. If you're high in empathy and low in extroversion, you are an introvert and produce less dopamine you will not have the urge to laugh. You might smile, but you are also most likely a man in an egalitarian country. If you're low in empathy and high in extroversion, you are an extrovert with more dopamine production. If you're low in cognitive empathy, you will not pick up on the laughter. You will not be forced by your brain cells to mimic the emotion of laughter, even if you have the ability to do so from your personality as an extrovert. If you're low in affective empathy, you will most likely not laugh or smile. Your brain simply does not produce the emotion in your brain. In all possible outcomes, you will not smile or laugh. Most likely a man in egalitarian countries, they are both lower in empathy and extroversion. The opposite for women. If you're low in empathy and low in extroversion, you are an introvert with low dopamine production. You will most likely not understand the emotion or laughter and not respond to it due to the cognitive or affective part of empathy, or both. Since you are an introvert, you will not show the emotion at all. More likely to be a man in egalitarian countries, women are the opposite. Now let's use an adult person being disgusted, which is conscientiousness as a mental model. Then we are going to combine the different personalities and empathy levels. If you're high in empathy and high in conscientiousness, you are an industrious person and effective. You will most likely identify the emotion of disgust in the adult because you are also high in disgust sensitivity. You will respond with the feeling of disgust, regardless of it being moral disgust or disgust from something described, something sickening or disgust about viruses or bacteria. It might also be disgust towards people or groups of people that have a different status than you do. Most likely a woman in egalitarian countries, since the mean value for women are 0.5 standard deviations higher than for men, men are also becoming less disgust sensitive in egalitarian countries and women more. That is why the parasite stress theory correlation to women disgust is so high. 
If you are high in empathy and low in conscientiousness, you will identify the adult person feeling disgusted, but not show the emotion of disgust since you are not disgust sensitive. You are also not an orderly person, most likely a man in egalitarian countries. If you are low in empathy and high in conscientiousness, if you are low in cognitive empathy, you will not identify the feeling of disgust and not respond to it. If you're low in affect of empathy, you will most likely not respond to it since your brain does not mimic the emotion. Most likely man in egalitarian countries. Women are mostly high in both. If you're low in empathy and low in conscientiousness, you lack the ability to identify or respond with a disgust emotion, also due to you not being a disgust sensitive person. This is most likely a man in egalitarian countries, most likely a dark tetrad personality. You should know that people that have low affective empathy have a high probability of being a psychopath, Machiavellian, narcissist or a sadist. I try not to have any relationship with these types of personalities since I know what is to come of them. The reason being that any normal human being will be influenced by their behaviors and mimic them to survive. This is a first step for you to get a handle on how to interpret different levels of empathy together with personality traits. In the next few videos I'm going to show you how to identify people you do not want to hire or be in a relationship with and why. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.